Well, on this Christmas day, it seems fitting to talk about some mystical creatures that are rather short in size, very filled with cheer and, uh, and goodness all around them. And so I'm sure naturally you all know that I'm talking about hobbits, halflings, shire folk. We're talking about the Lord of the Rings today, and there's only two types of people in this world, those who like Lord of the Rings and those who need to try again. <laughs> so if you do not like Lord of the Rings, then today I'm going to show you how it's actually a Christmas movie. So you're going to, if you don't like Lord of the Rings, then your mission when you leave here is to go re-watch the extended version of Lord of the Rings. Now that's the only one worth watching. Or you can read the books. Both good options. But here's the thing. December 25th plays an important role in the Lord of the Rings. I'm sure many, some of you might know this. Some of you might not. So for those who have never seen nor heard nor know anything about Lord of the Rings, you have the one ring, which is this embodiment of evil in the world. And the only place that it can be destroyed is the very place that it was created in Mount Doom, which is in the center of so much terror and destruction and evil in the world. And so leaving out from Rivendell, that house of the elves, see there's elves, so it's clearly Lord of the Rings is a Christmas movie. There's elves too. They gather together and they're trying to figure out what do we do to destroy, how do we destroy this ring? How can any of us overcome such great evil going into the center of, uh, of Mordor to bring this ring to have it destroyed? And out of this council around Elrond, this elf whose Rivendell is his home, the last homely house, as they call it, this small little hobbit, Frodo, steps forward and says, I will bring the ring but I do not know the way. And it's this little hobbit. So for those who don't know anything about hobbits, let me tell you about hobbits. Number one, on their birthdays, they give gifts to other people. They're very charitable, loving people. They, they love good food and good drink, like I'm sure many of you on Christmas Day especially like good food and good drink. And they're very simple people. And so here you have this hobbit, about yay tall, saying, I will bring this very dangerous thing and I will bring it to this very dangerous place. I will do this. And what day do they set out from Rivendell to on this journey? December 25th. It's in Appendix B of the books. I promise you I'm not making this stuff up. On December 25th, they set out on this journey, this fellowship of the ring, nine companions. But who is the ring bearer? Not the men with their swords and, you know, they're pretty big guys. Or not the elf with his keen eyesight and uh, ability to hear and all these, and his magic and all those things. No, it is not Gandalf the magician. It is, in fact, this very simple hobbit who is tasked with the most dangerous of tasks, setting out on December 25th. Do you know what day the ring is destroyed? Sorry for the spoiler. If you, I figured you could figure that out if you've never seen it before. The, the day the ring is destroyed, March 25th. March 25th has two significant meanings. Number one, it is the Feast of the Annunciation. When Our Lady, saying yes to conceive our Lord Jesus Christ, crushes the head of the serpent. And another meaning, traditionally, March 25th is the day that Christ dies on the cross, bringing our salvation. December 25th is not the end of a story. It is the beginning of a story. It is Jesus Christ being born into the world, into being thrust forth from Our Lady's womb to complete his mission. He could have, our Lord could have stayed safe in heaven. But what does our gospel say today? He comes as the light into the world to pierce through the darkness and the darkness will not overcome it. And on their journey throughout their, uh, to Mordor, as they're carrying the ring, there is much darkness all around them. But they do not let it overcome them. And when all hope seems lost, they are in the end able to bring this ring to Mordor, into Mount Doom, into the fires, and cast out the evil from the world. They could have chosen to stay safe. They didn't. This is the mission that we are called to go out, that Jesus Christ has set forth through his nativity by coming into the world saying, I will not be safe, but I will complete this mission. I will bring about your salvation even if it is dangerous to me. I will, our God, who created everything, created the heavens and the earth, the very word spoken forth from the mouth of the Father has decided 
to come out and make himself vulnerable to us, to lay down his life so that we might have this encounter with him. This is the gift that we are receiving at Christmas, that we might enter along this journey with our Lord Jesus Christ to not be safe, not be comfortable. For those who have lived life a few years, you know that life is not safe and life is not comfortable. There are dangers along the way. But it was so for Jesus Christ as well. He did not choose to remain safe. He chose to go on this journey, this journey to bring about our salvation. How is that light cause, how are we needing to call that light into our lives, into our hearts? How are we called to not stay safe and comfortable, but to cast out that evil that is maybe going through our lives, to be able to cast out fear and doubt from our lives? That does not come through comfort. That does not come through staying nice and safe. Frodo, when he, before he said that he would take the ring, it says he was dreaming of the Shire. He was dreaming of going back home to his safe and comfortable little home in the hill where he could just sit there, have good food, have good drink, and have good company. But instead, at the last moment, he says, no, I will bring the ring. I will step away from my comfort so that way we can cast this evil out from the world. And that is what we are called to do as we walk with Christ to the cross. The journey starts here. It does not end. For many, it can seem as if, you know, we go through Advent and then we finally make it to Christmas. And then, okay, this journey's over. No, this is ascending forth. At every Mass, children make sounds. It's okay. You can look here. It's okay. I don't know if anyone knows this, but children make sounds. I'm the one talking. It's okay. I, I love the fact that your child is here. No, I love her. It's okay. So <laughs> anyway, back here, hobbits, rings, Mordor, light into the world, all of these beautiful things. That is what we are called to focus on this Christmas. Not to say, look how we, we've... It's a lot of preparation for Christmas, isn't it? There's a lot of work that goes into that morning. There's a lot of food to be had, uh, presents to be bought, and then all of a sudden we, we arrive to Christmas, we're like, oh, it's all over. This is the start. This is a beginning. And the words at the end of Mass are a word of sending into the world. You are being called from this beautiful, safe place where we can come, we can gather, we can worship the Lord, and then to go out into the world to cast out darkness. That is the mission you are being sent on today. You do that how? By being like a hobbit. The innocence, the beauty, the goodness that is like a hobbit. That is how we are called to cast out the darkness. Through a simplicity of life, through good, being able to come together as family, to rejoice in one another, to fill our lives with that joy and that goodness and that love. That is how we cast out darkness. That is the gift that you have as you gather as a family today to be able to rejoice with one another, rejoice over good food and good drink, and to call to mind the nativity and birth of our Lord. As we gather here at this Mass, as we come to gather at this Eucharistic table, we receive the food for the journey to strengthen our souls, to go out to cast Jesus Christ's light into the world. That is why we are gathered here today. You are now at the end of this Mass to be sent as Christ beacons into the world to be like a hobbit, to bring even, to destroy sin and death, to be cooperators with the graces given to us through Jesus Christ, that way we can proclaim his nativity and more importantly, his second coming is near at hand.